What's the rush? Oh, I gotta beat my sisters up to the hotel. I want to see the look on Mom's face when she gets a load of Billy Joe's new dress. Yeah, that ought to be right entertaining. That's what I figured. So long. Bye, honey. Hey, Betty Joe, don't forget the mail. Thanks, Floyd. known as our baby's sister. Well, here goes and wish me a lot of luck. Sure, but you're gonna need an awful lot of it. You know, that dress is much too tight and Mom's never gonna let you keep it. Well, it's all a matter of psychology. Come on and see. <sighs> Mom, will you take a look at this dress? Don't you think I ought to take it back and get a size smaller? No, no, no I don't think so. But, Mom, it hangs on me like a burlap sack. I don't think so. Well, all right, if you say so, I'll keep it. No, you won't. You'll take it back and exchange it for one two sizes larger. Mom! You'll do as I say, or you won't keep it at all. Gee, Mom. All right, get one, one size larger. Mom, thank you. You know, I had this plan so cleverly. Something went wrong. Well, next time, make sure you don't use the same psychology tricks I used when I was your age. I knew you'd do it, Mom. I just didn't know how. I say, jolly good show, smashing. Well, have to get cracking. Ta-ta! <laughs> Anything for me, Uncle Joe? No. A couple here for some fella named Shady Rest Hotel. <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier if you opened it up and read it? I'll bet you a nickel this one's a bill. Uh-uh. The odds are too much in your favor. <laughs> Some company wants us to buy a couple of minks, start a mink farm. Hey, that wouldn't be a bad idea, breeding mink coats. Did they tell you where to buy the silkworms? Silkworms? So we can breed linens for the coat. <laughs> I'm taking them wisecracking pills again, huh? Here's one for you, Mark, personal. Oh. What's your reservation? Well, that's good news. Says she'll be here on the one o'clock train. Well, it must be about three now. She'll probably arrive on that 2.30 run at five o'clock. <laughs> if it's on time. Who's the new guest? Adelaide Keene. You know anybody with that name? Miss Keene? Is she coming here, old Genghis Keene herself? Genghis Keen? Yeah, she was the teacher who was so strict her pupils nicknamed her after Genghis Khan. You know, the roughest, toughest barbarian that ever lived. Oh. <laughs> Names you give your teachers. Why, when I went to school, we had some res... Wait a minute. Miss Keen was my teacher, too. Well, what do you know? Old Genghis is coming here. <laughs> Didn't she retire a year ago? Uh-huh. She said she was going to travel. Well, wait till Billy Joe hears about this. Miss Keen used to give her an awful hard time. I remember once she caught me chewing on a pencil, and she kept me after school until I chewed up the whole box of pencils. <laughs> <laughs> and I never chewed on one since. Well, if you think that's something, Mom, you should have been there the day that she caught someone chewing gum in my class. She made him stand and face the blackboard for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, so as like he deserved it. Mom, this was another teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was pretty strict, all right. But she was the best teacher that Hooterville ever had. She sure was. Remember the big testimonial dinner they gave for her retirement? Oh, that was a big event. What'd they present her with? Gold whip? <laughs> now, watch her. She's gonna take over like she owned the place. She'll demand the best room in the hotel, prompt service, and... Miss Keene, how nice to see you. Welcome to Shady Rest. Hello, Catherine. It's nice of you to accept me as a guest. <laughs> nice of us. It's, it's an honor to have you here. Hello, Miss Keene. Hello, Bobby Joe. Hello, Miss Keene. Billy Joe, how nice to see you. No, uh, you already know Uncle Joe, and that's my youngest, Betty Joe. How do you do, Betty Joe? How do you do, Miss Keene? You're looking very well. Oh, there's no need to be polite, dear. 
Oh, uh, uh, Uncle Joe, would you show Miss Keene to room 12? Sure, Kate. Watch your spring into action when I tell her supper's going to be late. Oh, Miss Keene, uh, supper's going to be a little late tonight. That's perfectly all right. <laughs> sure had her spotted, Kate. She's real terrifying. <laughs> So you nicknamed Genghis Keen, that timid little old lady? I can't understand it. Well, she must have gotten into that mood from all that traveling. Well, there's only one thing to do. we got to snap her out of it. Mom, that's going to take a lot of snapping. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming down, Mom. Oh, I'm glad. What's holding up supper, Kate? you got four starving loafers here. <laughs> well, just tighten up your belts for a few minutes. we got to try and get that poor woman riled up enough to insult one of us. Come on, girls. Are you ready for supper, Miss Keene? Oh, yes, but I don't seem to have much of an appetite these days. Oh. Well, um, have you ever tried chewing on a pencil like this, Miss Keene? <laughs> well, if you think it would help. Those pills I've been taking don't seem to be doing me any good. <laughs> How do you like my new dress, Miss Keene? It's very pretty, dear. It's a nice color, too. <laughs> is that gum you're chewing and pulling out of your mouth? Yes, it is. It's gum. Disgusting. Could I have a stick after supper, please? <laughs> I don't think a stick of gum's going to do it. We may have to try a stick of dynamite. <laughs> Miss Keene get her glass of warm milk, dear? Yes, but she didn't drink it. She got too involved in helping Betty Jo with her homework. Why is she bothering that poor woman? Oh, well, because Betty Jo's having a little trouble with her algebra. And she heard us all talking about what a great teacher Miss Keene is. Mm. What's the matter, dear? I just made a terrible mistake. I asked Miss Keene to give me a little help with my homework. That's not the thing to do. You said it. What she gave me was a lot of help. And, Mom, were you ever right about Miss Keene as a teacher? She's the toughest thing this side of the railroad tracks. <laughs> Bobby Joe, you go up to Miss Keene and ask her for help on your homework, too. But, Mom, I don't need any help. Oh, yes, you do. Now go on and get it. Mom, I'm an A student. Not anymore. From now on, you're a struggling C minus. Oh, I get it. Struggling C-minus student Bobby Joe Bradley ready to report to active duty to Miss Keene's room. Good girl. Well, hi, Mom, Billy. Come on in. Please. Back to your work, Betty Jo. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Catherine, what is it? Oh, I just wondered if you knew it was getting late. Thank you for the information. Anything else? Don't you want some sleep? No. I do. Catherine, you're disrupting us. Can't you see that? Now, unless you're prepared to take charge of these sadly neglected studies, please leave. Yes, ma'am, Miss Keene. Gladly. Gladly. Mom, are you going to let Miss Keene insult you that way? Well, until she finds another way, that way is going to do just fine. <laughs> just fine. <laughs> Did Miss Keene come down yet? She just went into the dining room. What's the matter with you girls? Don't you feel well? Her bush, Mom. Last night was our third tour of duty. How about sending in some replacements? We're getting battle fatigue. No. <laughs> you should be happy about doing a good deed. Allowing Miss Keene to help you is just what she needs to get back some of her confidence. She may be getting back hers, but we're losing ours. And she's worked out a plan of attack for us for every night next week. Genghis Keene rides again. <laughs> Billy Joe, I will not have you calling her that name. I'm sorry. Betty Joe, you bring in the coffee. Genghis is waiting. I mean Miss Keene is waiting. <laughs> you may be seated now. Yes, ma'am. Gentlemen will be gentlemen as long as I am a guest here. What happened? What's wrong? Didn't you know, Kate? Gentlemen always rise when a lady enters the room, and they don't sit down until the lady has sat. Oh. I like that. I think this could be fun. <laughs> now, Betty Jo, stop that. Uncle Joe is right. Betty Jo. I just 
wanted to see if it would work. <laughs> well, did you sleep well, Miss Keene? I'm getting the best sleep I've had in years. What's going on? I've decided it's time the men around here acted like gentlemen. Now, just a minute. Don't nobody tell me I ain't no gentleman. Joseph Carson, do you realize you've accomplished the impossible? Don't nobody tell me I ain't no gentleman. Four negatives in an eight-word sentence. Did you hear that, Mort? I ain't never had no education, either. Obviously. Oh, for Pete's sake. You may be seated, Billy Joe. Now we can begin our breakfast. Oh, not yet, Miss Keene. Uh, Charlie and Floyd aren't here. Don't they know when you serve breakfast? Oh, yes, but they're always a little late. Well, then perhaps if they missed a meal or two, they'd learn to be on time. Now, Billy Joe, as soon as we've finished eating, we'll uh, start a course of study for you. Mom, I think it's a good idea. Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Don't bother about getting up. It's only me. <laughs> Joe? That visiting demon from the world of books and rules. That's what's the matter. You gotta get rid of her, Kate. She's ruining everything around here. Uncle Joe, I, I know she has been hard on the family. It ain't just the family. She's ruining all the business we got. Uncle Joe, aren't you jumping to conclusions again? Yeah. Well, how's this for conclusion jumping? This morning she ran off two salesmen before they had time to check in. Well, maybe they weren't even gonna... Hey, I came here to loaf, not to be lectured. I'm checking out. What happened? Seems like I shouldn't have come to the table without being clean-shaven. Oh. Also, I did the unforgivable. I split an infinitive and dangled a participle. <laughs> when she leaves, I'll be back. Are you satisfied? Well, Uncle Joe, if I, if I tell her she's been carrying her authority too far, it'll break her heart. Well, if you don't, it'll break our measly bank balance. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'll, I'll fix her a nice supper tonight, and then I'll try and find a way of telling her that she has to leave first thing in the morning. Good girl, Kate. And give it to her straight. Really get it across. Don't act like you're afraid of her. Where are you going? Upstairs to shave. <laughs> Serving supper already? Yes. And then I, uh, want to tell you something. Where are the others? The girls. Oh, they're around uh, somewhere. We're having your favorite for dessert, blueberry pie. And then I want to tell you something. And your Uncle Joe, he doesn't seem like the type who would miss supper. She insults you to your face, then turns right around and does it behind your back, too. <laughs> and the salesman. And Charles and Floyd, where are they? Uh, they're around. Now. I want to tell you something. Oh, I, I have no... It's the same old story all over again. Everywhere I go, I, I, I drive people from me. <gasps> oh, Catherine, I'm going to be leaving in the morning. And then you can get your lovely daughters and your wonderful friends back again. Now, that makes it easier for Kate. She's saying what Mom would have found it hard to say. This is a cinch. <sighs> Miss Keene, I, I never heard such nonsense in all my life. <laughs> why, why, the reason nobody is here is because, well, the, the girls are, are up in their room having a picnic supper. <laughs> no aunts, you know? <laughs> and, and Uncle Joe and the boys, they have a, a running game of pinochle. They play on the cannonball, going from Hooterville to Pixley. And the salesmen, they come and go. You know how they are. I really haven't scared them off. You scare people off? <laughs> oh, that's amusing. Sometimes when it comes to handling a situation, your mother is pathetic. You not only brought honor to the shady rest by your mere presence, but culture and discipline. Bankruptcy and disaster. <laughs> your words are very reassuring. Oh, I'm glad. You may serve when ready. Uncle <laughs> Joe, <clears throat> girls, I... Uh, we know, Mom. We heard. Well, I just couldn't be responsible for making that poor woman depressed again. 
We understand, Mom. It's just that Miss Keene has to be a teacher no matter where she is. Yeah, but why did that where have to be here? Maybe we can find another way to handle this. Well, sure we can. Well, we've worked our way out of tougher situations before. You bet we have. And there's never, never been a problem we couldn't lick. Never. Right. But there's got to be a first time for everything. <laughs> the best spot in town for this project. Well, you know what they say, Kate. Stand in front of Sam Brucker's store for 24 hours and you'll meet every citizen in Ooderville. <laughs> Here comes Fred Ziffel. Oh, girls, get ready. You going after the likes of him? A dropout's a dropout. <laughs> well, well, free refreshment, huh? Where are they? Well, I have to ask you a few questions first, Fred. Uh, do you believe in education? Yep. Congratulations, you did it, you won. I did? Yeah. Well, Sam, how about that? I won myself free refreshment. <laughs> oh, uh, just a minute. Uh, you did finish grade school, didn't you? Well, almost. How far did you go? Fourth grade. <laughs> oh, what a shame. Oh, that's a shame. Well, Betty, you better cross out refreshments. Well, now, hold on now. Let's talk a little more now. Maybe I can win them back. Oh, all right. Uh, did you know that statistics show that the more education a person's got, the more successful he's bound to be? Well, you're doggone right I do. If them loafers down at the pool hall had as much education as me, they might be pig farmers, too. <laughs> and if you had more, you'd be a better pig farmer. And wouldn't it make you proud to be able to tell folks that you'd gone as far as the fifth grade? Oh, yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? No, all you have to do is come to school one night a week. That's when we serve the refreshments. And you read about the president saying he wanted every American to get as much education as he possibly could, didn't you? Do you consider yourself a good American? Well, I'll fight the first man that says I ain't. <laughs> be at the railroad crossing nearest your house Monday night at 8.15. And sign right there. Oh, that's all I got to do, now. <laughs> All right. Now, I'll sure be there. <coughs> well, I'll see you all there. Oh, I almost forgot what to come after. Sam, give me a jar of that bubble bath. <laughs> Our first drop in. Hi, Billy Joe. What you doing? Well, hi, Harold. He left high school after his first year. It's sure nice to see you. Where have you been keeping yourself? Oh, I've been around. You have, huh? Then I guess it's me that hasn't been, since the only time I'm free is Monday nights. Yeah? Then how about a date for this Monday night? Oh, I'd love to. Oh, dear. That's the night I have to help Mom with her new educational program for dropouts. Well, I'm a dropout. Mm, maybe some other time, Harold. Bye. He's hooked. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, I'd like to join your program for dropouts. Oh. oh, Harold, you are the tricky one, aren't you? You have to get up pretty early to outsmart me. <laughs> I'll see you Monday night, Billy Joe. If it wasn't for his own good, I'd disapprove of that method, Billy Joe. <laughs> Mom, we need more pupils. What's wrong, Fred? Have fun in school. Bye, Fred. Bye. See you Monday night. Bye-bye. You know, Sam... Offering the use of your property was very nice of you. Ah, it's a pleasure, Kate. Sorry I can't do more. Oh, you can. Well, you just name it and I'll do it. Well, as I recall, you dropped out of school in the seventh grade. Yeah. Oh, now, wait a minute, Kate. I'm a self-educated man. <laughs> Got it. Sam Drucker, eighth grade. Oh, this is ridiculous. I'm mayor of Hooterville and the editor of the newspaper. And... Great, Sam. I got a hunch you're going to be teacher's pet. <laughs> Charlie's slowing down for Harold Boggs. Uh, I'll help him with his lesson, Miss Keene. I never felt so stupid in all my life. Do you think she'll give us homework? Knock it off, will you, fellas? Samuel? Joseph? Lloyd? 
I will not tolerate any whispering. Now read your lessons. I'm going to ask questions later. Hi, Billy Joe. Hi. You gonna sit near me? You never can tell. Harold, sit right there. That's Genghis Keen. She's the reason I left school in the first place. Well, she's changed, you'll see. Harold Boggs, take your seat. She's changed, all right. From a raging tiger to a raging lion. <laughs> can bring her little lamb, I can bring my little pig. Come on in, Ruthie, and see for yourself. Hello, Ruthie. I didn't believe him. I thought he was meeting another woman here. I got a terrible, jealous nature, Kate. Yeah, well, um... Now that you're here, how about continuing your education? I don't mind if I do, then I can be near my man. Sure, I'll have Miss Keene fix your lesson. Uh, how far did you go in school? Oh, I finished my third year. In high school? Nope. Grade school. When I drop out, I don't fool around. <laughs> I got a feeling this school's never going to turn out a Madame Curry. <laughs> Joseph Carson, give that book back to Floyd. Well, make him stop throwing spitball. <laughs> Fred Ziffel. Ma'am? Must you hold that pig in your lap? No. Ruth can hold it in her lap. <laughs> Joseph, if you don't give that book back to Floyd, you'll stay after school and clean the ashtray. When's recess? <laughs> Miss Keene, uh, what happens if I don't show up next Monday? You'll bring a note from your father. What happens if I don't show up? You bring a note from your son. <laughs> now, class, open your books to page 10. We will begin with paragraph 1. Now, who can tell us what are the basic components of a sentence? <laughs> Harvard University, watch out. <laughs> are you sure Sam found her a nice place to stay? Just perfect, Mom, right near the library. Here she comes. Oh, dear. This is such a wonderful group, I hate to spoil it by giving you bad news. Bad news, Miss King? Oh, yes. I'm going to have to leave the Shady Rest. Oh, why? Well, as long as I have so many dropout pupils and classes three nights a week, I'm forced to move into town to be near the library. Miss King, what a shame. Please don't go, Miss King. The place won't be the same without you. Oh, <laughs> Catherine, girls. Don't make me feel any worse than I already do. You must try to understand that as busy as I'm going to be, I cannot afford to lose precious time in transit. I'm afraid she's right, Kate. This, then, my friends, is not goodbye, but merely au revoir. Oh, never mind. I can carry my own bag. Yes, teacher. <laughs> goodbye, Miss Bye, Miss Come back and see us. Until the cannonball's out of sight, don't nobody say nothing. Good joke. What's the matter, Kate? She can't hear me. She, she's only been gone seconds, and already you're back to using double negatives. 